afternoon folks big Bo here at rvs with big Bo and parkway rv center and today we're going to review a diesel class a motorhome guys i actually got a couple of these i want to review over the next few days uh this one is one that i actually really like myself and this is a 2002 monaco night it's the model 36 pbd and guys it's 36 feet four inches long it has two slides it's got the upgrade for the year 315 isc cummins diesel the big 8.3 liter with 950 pound feet of torque 74,000 miles which for a 20 year old motorhome is not bad at all and a very very nice condition this thing's got folder full of service records i mean it's been well maintained guys and i know it's an older motorhome maybe older than a lot of y'all want to buy but let me tell you something back then they built them with a quality that you do not see now uh, at least not without spending a whole lot more money uh, this particular one is 42.9 and i've got generator running 7.5 kw onan diesel generator looking around it guys two slide outs it will need one slide out topper canvas 50 amp electrical service uh, it does have a 1500 watt xantrix inverter like you got a little boogered spot right there by the window but like i said guys it's 20 years old and not many 20 year old rvs are going to look this good after that long and that 315 isc cummins is a uh, you know most of these had the 300 isb cummins which is a great motor but it was that low torque series cummins they had and uh the 315 was only 15 more horsepower, but you had almost 300 pound-feet of torque more than the 300 horsepower. Torque is where you get your power at on a diesel. Sorry, I got the diesel runner right beside me that people are picking up here shortly. You got a patio awning, you got a window awning. Guys, this is a Monaco. It's the sister brand to the Holiday Rambler Ambassador. It has a five layer sidewall, a five layer floor system, and most importantly, guys, a nine layer peaked uh, aluminum top roof system. Very, very strong roof system on a Monaco and a Holiday Rambler, guys. I uh, got the big four door refrigerator. I mean, it's typical wear that you're going to see on a 20 year old RV. You've got some little bit of cracking in some of the stripes but guys that's a hundred percent to be expected the interior of this thing makes more than makes up for it and matter of fact the interior of this 20 year old rv is nicer than most other rvs that are 10 years old let's look inside steps work great carpet recently replaced that's one less thing you have to worry about um the interior guys is and i did a video i kind of did a walkthrough video on this saturday when i rode around on the golf cart just kind of looked at some stuff that just came in um but i wanted to get this one this one deserved a lot closer look because this is a very very nice coach Seventy-four thousand eight hundred miles no everything runs good you know, we drove this thing up almost 600 miles back towing a car. Height, oh, that's nice. I like when people do that, guys. They put the height and the uh, width right there on the dash, especially for underpasses and stuff like that. 11 foot, nine inch height, eight foot, seven inch width. Backup camera works great, radio works great. It does have the six speed Allison transmission. It does have the hydraulic leveling jacks does have the engine brake not bad dash looks good windshields look good uh tv's been updated from a crt to a flat screen so they had to make a few modifications of course you try to put a rectangular tv into a square hole um seats look great the passenger seat is a recliner both the drivers and passenger swivels for party seating 
both air conditioners are on right now running on generator power and doing a fantastic job keeping it cool in here and i know the colors may be a little bit outdated but uh you can't argue about the quality now guys one thing um that i did do to this besides the carpet is i put a new sofa in it um the sofa that was in it had a couple of rips in it and i knew it was the same material as this right here i knew that i would never in a million years ever find that material so what i did is i ordered a new rv sofa sleeper sofa from my usual place that i use that i highly recommend called rec pro r-e-c-p-r-o and ordered a sleeper sofa for it and got it with the same color as the uh tan in this uh cloth seats so it looks pretty good uh but still got the original recliner uh leather this is all flex steel furniture so it's top of the line furniture in here as far as the factory stuff so you got a new rec pro sofa in here you got solid surface corian countertops very soft riding chassis no stress cracks whatsoever on those corian countertops that air feels great uh hardwood floors in here the beveled glass i mean little touches like that they just don't put them in, in them anymore and no cracks anywhere so right there tells you it's a good riding chassis it does have the airbags air suspension on the chassis refrigerator is an upgrade it's a uh, about a 18 cubic foot gas or electric rv refrigerator freezer in Let's see if it's starting to get cold in the freezer yet. It's actually, oh yeah, yeah, it's already getting nice and chilled in there. So yeah, I, I can pro, I can tell you pretty certainly that the refrigerator freezer works, generator works, roof airs works, slide outs work. It's ready to go, guys. You've got a Xantrix inverter. I've got it on. It works. Charging the batteries right now. You can see amperage putting out by the generator uh operating both acs you've got a walk through bathroom let's look at this shower this is the when you look at an older rv guys always look at the shower because if one's been stored outside a lot this will be bleached a bright yellow look at this guys this thing has not been stored outside, which I, I got that from the condition of the outside. I'm sure it's been stored outside some. According to the service records, it spent most of its life in Arizona, so you don't have to worry about rust. But uh, obviously, when not being used, it has been stored inside a lot because this is still uh, nice and wide. It's not turned yellow from the sun. Got a medicine cabinet. It's got the padded headliner. So if you've ever had a leak in one of these with a padded headliner, it's going to be very obvious because it'll be sagging down like an old car headliner does when it gets old and the glue lets loose and needs to be replaced. Or if it has been had a leak and that headliner has, has sagged and somebody has replaced it, guys, this headliner turns off white with age. So when you replace it, it's got a brighter white to it, and it's very, very obvious that it doesn't match the rest of the panels. This doesn't have any of that. So everything I'm seeing says this is a well-cared-for coach, plus service records and all the books and manuals. That's uh, You know, people don't keep paper records or service records anymore. I don't know why, but they don't. And, of course, guys, you know it's nice if it's got a uh, wood toilet seat. And a magazine rack, remember those? <laughs> now it does have washer and dryer hookups you can put in this closet. It's never had one because it's got the shelves. These shelves can be removed and you can put a possibly a, um, a washer and dryer in here, maybe even a stack, but that's up to you guys. I'm not a big fan of them unless I'm gonna be full timing. And we're going to go into the rear bedroom. Very nice and cozy rear bedroom. You've got a uh, closet, sliding glass door closet in the back. And uh, you've got a uh, Queen Island bed. This is a 60 by 80 queen bed, just same as in a house. You've got solid hardwood cabinetry. 
you've got a TV up here in the corner, which is the original TV. That thing might be worth something one day, an antique. Um, here's all your particulars about it. 2002 Monaco 36 PBD night. So everything's there. got some little bit of storage right here this is just a little small storage but hey every little bit helps um, you've got storage underneath the bed open this closet door up I guess I should have turned the light on in there but yeah there right here you got a couple of different ways to access top of your motor right here and right here Of course, you can also get to it from the back and the side, so it's, which, you know, most people not gonna mess with a diesel motor like they do but with themselves, like they do with a gas. So you take that to a, a diesel shop or a truck stop to get service. You do have sliding solid doors for privacy. Not bad, guys. I think for the price, it's actually a pretty nice trailer. Or trailer. Ah, sorry about that. Motorhome. Class A diesel motorhome. And like I said, guys, the newer Monaco or Holiday Ramblers are built by Rev Group. You know, they're nice coaches in their own way. But the build quality, and, and, and let me know what you, if you looked at one around this era, a Holiday Rambler or Monaco of this era, then looked at a newer one after Rev Group took them over, which one do you think is a better built one? I'm, I'm both for these. I always have. I, I've said that. I've looked at the newer ones, and they're nice for what they are. I guess for newer RVs, they may have more technology, but the build quality and the craftsmanship. Here's the thing, guys. That's what I'm looking at. I seriously doubt in 2041, a 2021 Holiday Rambler equivalent of this is going to look as good as this one does in 20. 21 uh when it's 20 years old i think this one really holds up better um you know for 20 years old guys I, I don't you can't argue about the condition is it perfect no but i guarantee you it's nicer than than most 2002 models you're going to look at on the market this unit is 42.9 we guarantee the slide outs generator roof airs and refrigerator freezers to work like they're supposed to. I've already checked them, guys. It's ready to go. You know, of course, you can come in and inspect it yourself. I, 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 wouldn't want, I wouldn't want you to buy it otherwise, but guys, it's ready. I mean, you, you come in, pay for it. You can take it home the same day as long as you pay with verified funds. And uh, we do have some limited financing on a 2002. I usually tell people on these older units like this especially, which you should do this with all RV purchases, uh, but check with your bank or credit union see what kind of loan terms and interest rate they can offer and then see what we can do and see which one works better for you. Sometimes it's us, sometimes it's the bank or your bank or credit union. So uh, I do recommend that should be any, that's common sense for any RV purchase guys or a car purchaser. You know, don't, don't take the finance department of an RV dealership, which is geared, most of them are geared to make money by marking the interest rate up after you get approved. In other words, they're dealing directly with the bank, not you. So you have no idea what the bank's telling the uh, telling the finance manager, what kind of rate you're getting. All you know is what's wrote on that loan contract. And the banks let the dealers mark the interest rate up over what they approve it for and let the dealer keep about 80% of that extra profit. And when you're looking at 429, and it was marked up two percent guys that's a lot of money over the life of an rv loan well guys here financing is a convenience for our customer it's not a way for us to make money so we have no dealer interest rate markup but other dealers especially the corporate dealers really stick it to you not only on price but they charge fees that we don't charge and they mark up interest rates on financing you know 
no other dealer that reviews used RVs is going to tell you to check with your own bank or credit union to see what kind of rates and terms they can give you because they don't want you to do that because then their finance department misses out on thousands of dollars of extra profit. But guys, I want you to. You know, I want you to get the best deal possible on financing and RVs and everything else, guys. So, I mean, that's... I mean, you know, I, I want you to come back one day and say, hey, Big Bo told me this, and it saved me from getting screwed. And uh, I like to hear, and guys, that's just because I've been around this business for 25 years now. I've I've been, I've, I've worked for these big corporate dealers, you know, for a little while, just long enough to know that, yeah, I could make more money there, but I couldn't stand to look at myself in the mirror in the morning or sleep at night. And uh, that's why they have such a high turnaround uh, on salespeople because they develop a conscience and they quit um, for what they're doing to people. And they should. You know, that's the thing, guys. You go to Rip Off World, all these other places, they, don't, they, they have very few salespeople that stay there longer than a year. Um, and there's a reason for that, guys. I mean, I still get calls every week from salespeople from Rip Off World wanting to know if we have a sales opening here. And um, it's crazy. I've got a long list of salespeople to call if one of my guys ever quits or gets fired because they want to work here. They, they, they'd quit their job the next day and be here the day after. Um, but, guys, you know, I don't do that. And the bad thing is when I do hire, and it's funny because I was talking to one of my salespeople here the other day about this. I have to de or retrain them on the right way to sell RVs what the, based on, you know, compared to what they were taught to at Rip Off World and the other corporate dealers. I have to retrain them completely because we operate completely different than they do. You know, we let you come out and look. They don't. You know, they, they if you walk, if you go into a Rip Off World or many other corporate RV dealerships, franchise dealerships, first thing they do, guys, you can't just go out and look at their inventory. They got to set you, uh, everything's locked behind in a prison yard behind a lock, uh, big tall fence with barbed wire on top and a lock gate to get into it. And you go, of course, first thing you're going to do is walk into the showroom to ask somebody to unlock the gate so you can look. You know, it ain't that easy, guys. They set you down, they interrogate you for about 10 minutes, ask you all kinds of questions. They get a copy of your driver's license. Many people don't know this, but you can actually do a soft pull on credit off information on your driver's license if you've got the right software from the credit bureaus. And um, in fact, an old trick they used to do when they gave balloons out to kids, uh, this was years and years ago when I worked there, is they'd give the kid a certain color balloon based on what credit score their parents had. So the sales, when they had the RV festivals and the RV shows, they always get the free balloons. And if it was red, that means they, they can't buy if they wanted it. And that's sad to say, but that was a very old trick, was a balloon color showed the salesperson um, the eligibility, if they should waste their time with a customer or not. And that's sad, but guys, I remember that specifically. Um, <laughs> if you got a green one, Usually it was green. That was the one everybody wanted. Everybody was fighting over you. If you walked around with a red balloon, nobody would touch you. So, <laughs> and guys, it's crazy. It's some of the tricks I've learned in, in working there and then being in this business. Guys, I could write a book about them, the tricks and the scams and the fees. You know, a lot of dealers don't advertise fees, even though legally they're supposed to. Um, uh, but they want to advertise the dock fees and prep fees and processing fees and happy camper fees, freight fees, and all this other nonsense, guys. That's all 100% dealer profit. It's a way for a, for these big dealers to advertise a lower price but have a much higher out-the-door price by disguising those profits in the form of extra fees. I'll tell you something, guys. The only fees that they have to charge, really, is what the state makes them. Like us, Georgia makes us charge a $100 highway impact fee to Georgia residents only and a $40 to $50 tag and title fee. And, of course, everybody has to pay applicable sales tax, either here or at your local DMV office uh, in your home state. just depends on how you pay for it and what state you live in. So if you want information about that, just uh, ask your salesperson. They'll give you, the, give you an idea on that. 
you know, if you basically guys, and just to put it to you simply, if you live out of state from Georgia and you're just going to pay for it, you're not going to finance it. You just bring us a cashier's check, uh, wire tra bank to bank wire transfer, or would prefer a cashier's check um, or wire transfer to cold hard cash. But I'm not going to turn down cash, but I'd rather you bring a cashier's check or uh, do a wire transfer that lot less paperwork with the irs involved because this isn't the 80s guys cash isn't king in 2021 no more as a matter of fact it's dangerous to travel with large amounts of currency um people do it i don't know why but it guys 10 minutes after you give us that cash it goes into the bank they do a form 8300 on us we do a form 8300 on you and when you drew that cash out of the bank, your bank did an 8300 IRS form on on you as well. So it's a it's it doesn't matter, you know. Cash doesn't give you any benefit. It doesn't give you any uh, how should I say this under the radar privileges because it's still the same. You get a cashier's check. You do a wire transfer. It's all recorded and goes through the Federal Reserve. So or pay cash. It goes through it too. So and just uh, for the security. I do not recommend carrying large amounts of currency, guys. You can bring me a cashier's check for 42.9. You can bring me a do a wire transfer, 42.9. As soon as it hits my account, motorhome's yours. So, uh, and if you got questions about that, guys, give us a call. Um, Cause honestly, and I'm not trying to sound ungrateful. I hate large amounts of cash because it, it's just a security risk that is stupid to take. In this day and age now 30 years ago you didn't want the government to know how much money you made that was four computers and all that yeah i could see it back then but that sort of thing doesn't exist now um but again guys i'm not going to turn it down if you do bring cash i would just prefer that you didn't that you brought cashier's check or wire transfer so anyway you probably never had somebody tell you that before have you but that's that's the way pretty much all rv dealers feel because we do take a lot of cash deals here um i mean we literally send hundreds of those i mean we probably send 100 120 of those 8300 forms a year to our internal revenue service so which is no big deal but it unless you're doing something illegal you got nothing to fear but so this you know it's uh like what a fifty sixty thousand dollar fine if you don't do one of those forms and you get caught so anyway guys um and also if you are selling a vehicle and you do take cash you need to do some research into that 8300 form even if you're a, even if you're not a business you're still required to file one of those anytime somebody pays you more than ten thousand dollars in cash check with your accountant and uh, get the information on that for those of you who are selling something for sale by owner just keep that in mind not trying to scare nobody but i had a customer argue with me the other day that uh, brought cash about that form and uh and he was wrong and i had to file one on him so but you know here in the south you get you get a lot of these old farmers and stuff that nothing wrong with it but that's just the way they are so Anyway, guys, thank y'all for watching. I really appreciate my uh, my viewers. I'm right at 30,000 subscribers. So if you haven't hit a subscribe, please subscribe to my channel, RVs with Big Bow. Like my Facebook page, also under the same name, RVs with Big Bow. And um, let me know in the comments what you think about this this older RV, guys. I love these older RVs. I love the build quality. I love the character of them. Um, definitely for the price range it is definitely a well-built diesel got a great motor in it and um shouldn't last long but thank you again for watching guys please call before coming to look to verify availability please keep in mind guys we charge no fees besides the hundred dollar highway impact fee and a 40 to 50 dollar tag and title fee for georgia residents only and of course applicable sales tax which again not try to repeat myself but depends on the state you live in and the um, how you're paying for it. Thank you again for watching and look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia 